Well, you are ready. I know you are. I know you've gotten yourself stirred up today. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe you've had a day like I have sometimes where somebody else has stirred you up. Well, whether it's on the positive side or the negative side, it, we're just going to turn it all positive tonight because this I know. He got up on that third day. An angel said, Mary, go and tell the son of the living God is risen. Jesus, why well, he's alive and well. He's a healer, a deliverer. He's a savior. He's a sanctifier. He's a baptizer in the Holy Spirit. He is a father to the orphan. He is a husband to the widow, to those that walk the dark night. He's the bright and morning star. Besides him, there is no God. So let them throw Daniel. Let them throw you, me, in the lion's den. Or we'll just do what David did. Daniel did. We'll just wreck in our position, turn our face toward Jerusalem, offer our prayer up to God, pillow our head in the shaggy mane of the lion, sleep like a baby all night long. Why? We know God's able. He's not only able, he is willing. Now, I, I've been pounding on that point for two weeks now. I want you to know it is God's will to bless you. Why would he be called the blesser if it wasn't his purpose, his character, his nature to bless you? Why would he be called Jehovah, Rafika, the Lord God who healeth thee? Why would that be his name? His name should be, I'm the Lord God that makes you sick. I'm the Lord God that torments you. We know that's not the character of our God. I just, sometimes I just get angry about what religion has done, like finding a God that doesn't answer prayer. I've studied this Bible. My college roommate's father said he'd read the Bible from Job to Malachi. Well, we know that's Job to Malachi. Well, I've read the thing many more times than I even know all the way through. And I've never found a God in here that does not hear and answer prayer. The Lord Jesus stood outside the tomb of Lazarus, his friend, now dead for four days. And he said these words, Father, I know you hear me always. Now I can see that those religious horns poking up through your halo right now. I hear you saying, well, but that was Jesus. Okay, and what are you, a bullfrog? This book, and the book is right and they are wrong. This book says that you are an heir of God. But wait a minute now, it doesn't stop there. It says also, you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ the righteous. Come on, get in the word. Get the word in you. Eat the book. Devour the book. I did a, I did a study uh, this week. In fact, I, I did it at the request of one of our great City Harvest Network pastors, Pastor Medina Pullings. I'm just going to see right now if I can pull it up for you because it's in my spirit. And what I'm doing right now is just giving you a few minutes to make sure you're online, to quiet things down around you. Please don't watch with me on your dashboard while you're driving down the road. Lay it beside you and at least listen, but don't watch it. Or if you really want to join in with me, all you need to do is pull over. There, there are parking lots all over the place. Just go to a nice, safe place and pull over. But what I mainly want you to do is share. You know, uh, when I was being brought up in church, we had to learn things like the Roman road. 
And uh, even as an early teenager, I was required to go door to door and knock on doors and share. Some of you don't even know what the Roman road is. What's well, the most, it's the Roman road and the four spiritual laws. They're the two most used, most used tracts on south. Some of you don't even know what a tract is. A tract is a little booklet that you just leave places that you give to somebody that gives them the plan of salvation. Well, we were required to keep those with us at all times. And we were required to go door to door, knock on the door and share those four spiritual laws or the Roman road from the book of Romans and share our faith with people and bring them into the kingdom. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine getting teenagers to do that today? Of course, it'd be easier. They could just put it up on their phone and go right through it, couldn't they? Well, why are you sharing that, Pastor Rob? One reason, because it's so easy for you to share the gospel of Christ easier than any other generation. Perhaps you have a thousand followers on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever platform you may use. What if you had a hundred? Well, if a thousand of you who are watching right now had a hundred followers and you shared that, you hit that share button and shared that, over a hundred thousand people would immediately be hearing the gospel of Christ. I had to walk door to door. All you have to do is hit a button. So come on now. You're not supposed to be a spectator. You're supposed to be a participant. You're not supposed to be a consumer. You're supposed to be a contributor. And I know you are, and I know your heart is to be. So start right there. Start by sharing. Do that right now. Let everybody that you know, know that Pastor Rod is going to bring a word tonight. Now, I'm going to tell you, straight out. It's a very, very encouraging word tonight. We are still on Healing Wednesdays, so let's jump over there and show them. We are on Healing Wednesdays right now. There it is. I knew they'd find it. It's just a little button. You just pop it like that, like I'm asking these folks to do. And uh, it's still Healing Wednesdays right over there, you know. And tonight, we are going to be talking about the healing touch of mercy. Oh, listen, I am so thankful for the grace of God, but I want to shout all over this room and around the world that I am a recipient of the mercy of God. Now, I know that you may think that mercy and grace are the same thing, but they're not because the Lord had me write two different books. One's called Grace, Uncovered, Unfiltered, and Undeserved. And while I was writing it, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Are you sharing? The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you must at the same time release my word, not only about grace, uncovered, unfiltered, undeserved. You can't talk about grace, the Holy Spirit said to me, unless you follow it up with mercy. There it is, unfailing, unending, unrelenting mercy. And mercy and grace are not the same thing. We're going to distinguish them tonight. A little later in our time together here, live, I just love being live with you. And so I want you to let me know where you're watching from all over the United States and around the world. I want you to like, I want you to share, I want you to text. I want everybody, everybody, everybody to know this great word tonight on mercy, mercy. And uh, I'll share a little later with you how you can get those. And uh, but let me let me find here what I shared with my precious doctor, Medina Pullings, regarding the Word of God, because it's so very, very powerful. Here it is. 
Here it is. Here's what I shared with her. She said, Pastor, are, are people really in the word? I said, well, let me give you some statistics. So here's what I sent her. Now, let me remind you, this is a Bible. I, I've been taken back to a message that I preached, the God that was, the God that is, and the God that is to come. Do you know where I preached that? I preached that in the 22,000 seat Lennon Sports Arena in, on the day they changed the name of the city from Leningrad, Leningrad to St. Petersburg. I was preaching the first gospel crusade in the Soviet Union in Russia just days after the failed coup of Mikhail Gorbachev. Me, I was there and I was preaching the God that was, is, and is to come. And I told them, I said, this is a Bible. They hadn't seen one for over 70 years. It meant imprisonment to have a Bible. This is the oak of God planted in the forest of eternity, entwining its roots around the rock of ages. It is not truth, true, it is truth. It is the truth. There is not your truth and my truth and their truth and some guy stroking his goatee on a university campus, peering over the brim of his glasses with a circle of smoke from his pipe and wreathing his head. That, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this as a living book. Th this is not uh, USA Today. This is a living book, and it's truth. And if you are, are a true believer, you possess, now hear me, you possess a hunger for this book, not unlike a baby hungers for milk when it is born. But as you get older, you get away from milk and you get away from the things mom and dad tried to get you to eat. And you start eating, drinking Coca-Cola and other things. And because you're so full of that, the husks of the world, you don't hunger the word of God anymore. You're full of your phone. You're full of the, the uh, television set. You're full of, you know, Silly, silly things on TikTok. But where's your hunger for the word? This is, I'm going to read you an indictment because I dug into it when Dr. Pullings asked me, and here's what I found out. Only 11% of Americans ever read their Bible. I'm, I'm going to share that again. Only 11%. 89% of, in a so-called Christian nation, America, 89% never, ever read a Bible. Millennials, if you're out there listening to me, you are the lowest group of that percentage. The highest group of that percentage are those like me. I'm 65, and I'm in the group that reads the Bible more than any other group. Maybe it's because they know they're getting close to eternity, but that's the lie of the enemy, because tomorrow the book says is promised to no one. So keep that in mind. I'm going to share with you about mercy. Let's see where folks are watching from. Just before I do that, and get into the word, the healing streams of Calvary, the healing streams of Calvary. 
It's one of the most beautiful things that God ever had me produce. I'm reading to you healing scriptures with beautiful music background under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send this to you as a download. The instructions are right there on your screen. I'm going to send it to everyone who leaves me their email address. Okay? Leave me your email address. I'm going to send that right out to you. And I'll send you a whole lot more things by download that will minister to you. I want to minister to you every through every medium I possibly can. So let's see where folks are joining me from. Cuba. Let's see, we just say that and people, and it's just like water, you know. People in Cuba are watching the Word of God tonight under the anointing. Thank you, those of you that support this ministry financially. Thank you so much because you make this all possible. You're my friend. You're my partner. Some of you have been standing with me for 30 or 40 years. Some of you are brand new friends. You know what? Why don't you drop a $20 seed and ask for this? Uh, you don't have to. But those of you that will, drop a $10 seed or a $20 seed when you leave me that email, and it'll be a great, great blessing helping us get the gospel around the world to places like Cuba, the Netherlands, Fiji, Costa Rica, hallelujah, there in Pakistan. I'm, I'm never live that folks in Pakistan aren't watching because we have 43 Holy Ghost filled churches there. France, Panama, Ireland, Indonesia. Thank God in the war, ravaged, Russian raped nation of Ukraine. I met with three more pastors from there this week. I handed them a check and I said, you go back and you go over there and you feed as many people as you can. You get them to safety, uh, most of it going toward Poland. Get, get here. Take this money and use it. And God be in my help, I'm going to do more next week. But I really, really need some help. So we'll talk about that maybe a little at the end. But they're watching, watching in Ukraine tonight, Austria, Italy, Sierra, Sierra Leone, Poland, Poland is being inundated with Christians. Do you know that Ukraine is the most Christian nation in Europe? Yes. Why do you think the devil hates it? So they're going over to Poland for safety. Met with pastors of churches in Poland just this past week and told them, take some of this money and help those people, feed them. They said they're arriving with the clothes on their back and maybe their little cat or little kitten. And that's all they've got. Their homes are destroyed. Their businesses are destroyed. Anyway, I'm not supposed to talk about that right now, but it's on my heart. I'm talking about the whole wide world here. America, do you know what Dr. Lester Sumwell taught me and trained me about America? He said, Rod, don't ever forget and his pointing finger was a little bit bent, and, and he would point with it, and he would say, Rod, don't ever forget, America is that rich man with Lazarus begging at her gates. Let's not make them beg. Let's help them. God has blessed you to be a blessing, and I know you want to be. Uh, Poland, New Zealand, Got anybody from America, Congo, Ghana, Ecuador, Israel, Jordan, Barbados. If I took a tour to Israel, would you want to go? Would you go with me? M Megan's over here. She's raising her hand. She's been with me several times. Type in there. I'll go. <laughs> Maybe we'll put a tour together. Back to the land of the Bible. Every believer should go at least one time to Israel. We got Sean in Maryland. We love you. Thank God for you. Elijah in Texas. Karen in Washington. Kelly in Virginia. 
Then we've got Amy in Arizona. We've got Lori in Indiana. We've got Rodriguez in Pennsylvania. And we've got Robert in North Carolina. Is there anybody from Ohio? Lucas in Kentucky. Laura in Louisiana. Ashley in North Carolina. Diana in Texas. God bless every one of you. We love you so much. Josh, there we go. Josh is watching in Ohio and Lena in Tennessee and Kathy in South Carolina and Latasha in Florida. My, we had a great time in Florida. Uh, was it a week ago? We were in Florida. Seems like three weeks ago. Great City Harvest Network churches. I preached for Bishop Clint Brown. And uh, where else was I, Megan? Uh, I preached for Bishop Jonathan Miller. We had a great time there. We had a tremendous meeting of about, I don't know, 50 City Harvest Network pastors. And what a time we, we are having in City Harvest Network. If you're a pastor and you're looking for fellowship of the right kind, that's it for you. Well, listen, I'm going to get started now. So grab a Bible, grab a Bible, and we're going to begin tonight. I want to share with you from Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. That's where I'm going to go. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. God said, I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your lives. For it is the blood that makes the atonement for your soul. I want to share that one verse with you very quickly because, as I said, for everyone tonight who will just leave an offering of any size while I'm ministering God's Word to you or just leave me your email address, I'm going to send you Healing Streams of Calvary. And that's where I start off, that healing is in the blood. So all you have to do, leave me your email address. I hope you'll leave a little offering with it in Jesus' name to help us continue to minister the Word of God. Now, last week, I promised you that I'd bring you a word from my book, Mercy, Unfailing, Unending, and Unrelenting. So Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, here it is. Know therefore that I, the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy with them who love his commandments, listen to this, to a thousand generations. Do you know, should the Lord tarry your coming, your being in this book is going to bless your family to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. Psalm 23, 6, surely goodness and, come on, you know the 23rd Psalm, surely goodness and, type it in right now, go. Let's see how many folks we can get. Ruth in Nevada, Natasha in New Jersey, Matthew in Tennessee, Susie in Alabama, type the next word, goodness and blank shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Want another one? Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Now, I'm going to go through two or three more scriptures here, and what I want you to notice is that the word merciful and the word gracious are both in the same verse, so they can't be the same thing. Do you think you know right now what the difference in mercy and grace is? Well, we need more teaching, don't we? So I'm going to share it with you tonight. The Lord God's merciful. He is gracious. There it is. Slow to anger. He's abounding in mercy. Throw the next one up there. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. You want to be blessed? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I don't know if you're blessed or not. Are you merciful? If you're merciful, you will obtain mercy. Throw the next one up there. Let's keep moving. Hebrews chapter number 4, verse 16. Let us then come with confidence to the throne of, here it is, 
grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. If you're in a time of need tonight, get ready. Tell everybody you know. Share it right now. Why? We are go and I need you to comment. Everybody comment tonight. I'm an audience participation preacher. You understand? So you don't talk to me, I don't talk to you. But we got a lot of folks talking. Jeanette, Jeanette in Massachusetts, uh, Tiana in Pennsylvania, Nancy in Oregon, Shelby in Virginia, Michael in Indiana, Maria in New York. First time I've said New York tonight. Here's another, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Powerful, powerful. He loved us. Verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. So what's the difference between mercy and grace? I got a book on each one. They can't be the same. They appear in all those verses and many others in the same verse. So there's a distinction. Well, let's start in the Greek. The Greek word for grace is a word you'll probably recognize. It's the word charis, and it means kindness or favor. Now, the Greek word for mercy is aleos, aleos, not charis, aleos. It means compassion and pity. That word pity is very important. So mercy then is the act of withholding judgment or punishment that is deserved. Grace is totally different. It is the act of endowing unmerited favor. Think of it this way. In his mercy, God does not give us the punishment that we deserve. I want to say that again, because I think this is one of the most vital things for you to understand. So that as you're going through your Bible and you hit the word mercy, you know what he's talking about. Or you hit the word grace, you know what he's talking about. In his mercy, God does not punish when we deserve to be punished. That's mercy. We all deserve to go to hell, but mercy, ha, ah, reached down off that bloody, angry, mean, biting beam and touched our lives with the blood of Jesus. So we're not going to end up in hell. Why? Mercy. But then grace, God gives us grace. It's a free gift. We don't deserve it. And grace is the extension of the favor of God. So one is the hand of God withheld from deserved punishment. That's mercy. Grace is unmerited favor, unmerited divine assistance. It's given to every one of us so that we can receive saving, here it is, grace, regeneration, sanctification. Now listen, you cannot deserve grace. And if you can't deserve it, you can't ask for it. The very nature of grace is that it is a free gift of God. Mercy, let's think about it another way. Mercy is compassion. Mercy is forbearance. Shown especially, now here's where we're going to get into some maturity, especially to an offender. Mercy extended to an offender, especially to someone subject to another's power. Wow. 
we can show mercy to people. We can relieve their pain. We can relieve their suffering. Now, I wrote this down actually just this afternoon, and, and I, I, I believe it will be very, very beneficial to you. Number one, any psychologist, sociologist will tell you that anger is always a secondary emotion. So when the husband kicks the dog, he's, he's not actually upset with the dog. He's upset with something back there somewhere. Maybe that day, maybe days ago, maybe weeks ago. Anger is a secondary emotion, but anger is also cathartic. It's, it, whether you say it does or not, when you just blow off about something in the time you're doing it, it feels really good. Do you ever notice that a lot of the things that feel, feel really good to your flesh are things that end up destroying you? You understand? So if we're dealing in mercy, come on in close now. If we're dealing in mercy, we have to remember that you and I in our flesh, punishing someone who has offended us, wishing ill to come to them because they hurt us, to your flesh, man, is very desirable. Revenge always sounds rewarding. I'll get back at them. They'll see. But in reality, anger and revenge and unforgiveness work like you being angry with someone that's offended you and you say, well, I'm going to get them. I'm going to drink poison and expect the offender to die from it. The only person who's going to die when you drink the poison of offense and of unforgiveness and of anger <clears throat> and of bitterness, the only person that's going to be hurt by that is you. And I pray that even now you're going to start typing in, I forgive. I release. I let it go. I'm going to get over my fine self. I'm finished with it. I'm washing my hands of it in forgiveness. Do you know who gets set free? You do. You do. Now we're dealing in the merchandise of the healing power of showing mercy. Because in the flesh, if someone has harmed you, hurt you, offended you, striking out at them is the natural thing. But when you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, when you're living in the Word of God, you realize that mercy stops that hand and punishment and revenge and anger get stopped. Although that person may deserve it, mercy stays at hand. Mercy does not recompense evil for evil. And here's a way to think about it. God's great and mighty hand. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I sense your presence and your power so strongly. Let every person who's been offended release that offense. Let every person who's been wounded heal that wound, Lord, by causing them to release whoever it is, and forgive whoever it is that has wounded and hurt them. Bring deliverance to your people tonight, God, in Jesus' name. Now, now type it in there. Let it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. Whatever happened to me is not worth my future joy, my future victory, my future blessing. You've got prayers that need answered, dear friend. How in the world? Do you know when you're offended at someone, you, you cause the situation to seem as though God's offended with you? Because 
He's not pouring out that mercy because mercy comes to the merciful. Did you hear this preacher? Ooh, I'm getting down in your stuff tonight. There's an awe-inspiring account in your Bible, in the book of Acts, concerning the apostle Stephen. Come on, I want you to type in there. I forgive. I release. I'm over it. I'm finished. It's done. Whatever speaks to your heart about your situation, that's why God gives us this medium so everybody can talk. Everybody can get involved. If you, if you see someone that says, I'm forgiving right now in that line, type back to them and say, I'm agreeing with you. Let them know they're not alone. Might be Ben in Maryland or Joy in Indiana or Will in Oklahoma or Melissa in Florida. Come on. I want to share with you this story from your Bible in the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, uh, chapters 6 and 7. It is the recording of the apostle Stephen. In my Bible, it's, it says the arrest of Stephen in chapter 6. In chapter 7, Stephen's speech. And then if you read later in, in chapter 7, it's the stoning. Don't go anywhere. It's the stoning of Stephen. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We started off in chapter 6 with him being arrested, but then he's given a speech. And the next thing we know when we keep reading, the Bible's a very interesting book. It's better than any spy novel. You ought to read it. Is the stoning of Stephen. Many many, including me, consider that the very first Christian martyr, thank you, Daryl in Texas, forgiveness, favor, Joyce in Michigan. Come on, folks. Brian needs prayer for drug addiction. Come on. I want to hear, I want to hear that you're forgiving, that you're letting it go, that you're releasing it. Now, Stephen was the first Christian martyr. What does that mean? He freely and willingly laid his life down after the resurrection of Jesus for the testimony and the witness of the gospel of Christ. The first martyr, Stephen, he was, as usually is the case, falsely accused. Now, hold on. Because I I want to talk to some folks tonight. I know there have been a lot of folks in the same boat that I've been in more times than I care to even think about or number where I've been wrongly accused. It's the tactic of the enemy to get you to give up. Hello, are you there? To get you to give up. You're not going to give up. I will come where you are. I will knock on your door. I will shake you to your boots in the spirit like I am right now. You're not going to give up because somebody lied about you. The truth will eventually triumph. But Stephen, let's see his course of action. Stephen got on his Facebook, his Instagram, his And somebody had created an account and just gone to lying on him. Hmm. Somebody in church, a church person, lied about them. Wait a minute. Stephen was falsely accused of the unforgivable sin, blasphemy. So he was stoned to death by the church folk, the Jewish council in Jerusalem. So we read about it. You can tonight, beginning in Acts 6, on through, as I shared with you, chapter 7. Stephen's death 
was heart wrenching. It was it was full of sorrow and woe. It, it, it it's like a Shakespearean tragedy. And yet his martyrdom was majestic, glorious, because it unveils that not only could Jesus, the living Christ, be merciful, but human persons who had surrendered to the gospel of Christ and truly been filled with the Holy Spirit to do something other than just talk in tongues, who had truly been filled with the Holy Spirit as Stephen was, though lied upon, though not beaten, stoned to death, sometimes took hours for them to perish. Your Bible says you've not resisted, yet resisted unto blood. Jesus, Stephen, showed us the way, but we can't even do it because somebody said something unkind, unkind on social media about us. Come on, y'all, get up out of that mess. Rise up. We're talking about mercy. Pastor, oh, Pastor Deborah George, Dave, Pastor David Cook, Pastor Brian Bolt, Pastor Nora Akawumi, all great City Harvest Network pastors are watching right now. I'm giving you a good sermon for Sunday, everybody. His martyrdom, his death, people are talking about Stephen today because of his final words. Now picture it, he's been, he's been lied on. There could be no grosser sin in that day than the sin of blasphemy. So religious people, church folk, are stoning him physically to death. And you know what Stephen's final words were? Right before he drifted off, into eternal sleep? Well, it's in your Bible, in Acts chapter 7 and verse 60. Here are Stephen's words. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. In his last moments, in his final, gasping, dying breath in his final statement upon this earth. Wait a minute now. Stephen was a miracle worker. S signs and wonders and miracles. Stephen one of the greatest men of God in your Bible. And yet there he lays. He's being stoned to death for the witness of Christ. He's dying. The religious people that want this new upstart thing called Christianity, Christ ones, they wanted to stomp it out. Did you ever notice that a new move of God is always most resisted by the previous move of God? I've watched it four times in my own lifetime. Don't be that. Be like Dr. Sumrall taught me. He said, Rod, don't ever let God do anything on the earth and you not be right in the middle of it. Don't get stuck. There he is. Somebody told a lie about him on Facebook. And there he is, forgiving. As he's dying, asking God, watch, asking God, the hand responding to offense, instead of saying, God, pour down fire and brimstone on them. I'm your servant. I expect you to make them pay. Mercy comes. 
Father, don't hold this sin to their charge. Whew. He's talking to the very attackers who brutally, forcefully, horribly, painfully put him to death. What in the world could be more breathtaking than to witness such an act of mercy? Now, do you remember? Do you remember? Jesus is on the cross. Do you remember? He's on the cross. He's up and down, up and down again and again in that horrible sag of death. He pushes on those iron spikes through his heels on either side of the cross to try to raise himself up. His lungs are so filled with blood and fluid, he's gasping. And there's a thief being crucified next to him. He's the son of God. He's done no sin. Nothing can be laid to his charge. How many times do you say, I didn't do anything. Why is this happening to me? Well, I thought you were a Christ one. Do you know that things come into our lives so we can prove to everybody around us that we're full of his mercy? We don't, we don't, we get slapped on the cheek, we turn the other cheek. You're listening to me. Look at our Savior. Laid upon him the sin, the sickness, the poverty of the in death, the entire world is upon him. And there's a guy being crucified next to him, a thief a reprobate, the offscouring of earth. And he said, Lord, Jesus bends over with that rugged beam digging into his lacerated back, turns his head as much as he can toward that thief and said, yes. The thief said, simply remember me. I want you to know something right now. Jesus never forgets you. Doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, who you know, who you don't. Jesus, people, yes, but not Jesus. And he told that thief, Today, I'm going to take you to paradise. Do you understand? It was that thief's sin and yours and mine. Think about it in this context. It was the sin of that very thief that had him hanging there between heaven and earth. Jesus could have said, you're doing this to me. It's because of you that I'm bleeding out of every portal. I'm the son of God. You are a thief, a reprobate, a criminal. You're why I'm hanging here. And Jesus said, today, I'm going to take you to paradise with me. That's mercy. That's mercy. Oh, surely my daughter is addicted, addicted to drugs. Lori, I'm believing for my son's redemption. Eddie, I'm believing for the healing. My daughter has cancer. Forgiveness for sin. David, God's forgiveness. Joyce, 
I need salvation for myself and my family. I feel that right now. I feel that right now. Jesus is going to set you free. And you forgive every single person. I said earlier, and it's not original with me. I, I've had it pounded into my psyche by my beautiful wife, Joni. She always says, I, I don't have any room for unforgiveness, bitterness. I don't have any room for anger, for strife. It doesn't matter what they did to me. It matters what they did to Jesus. And it matters how I respond because if I don't extend mercy, I will never receive mercy. I want to pray for you right now. You need not only to forgive, you need forgiveness. You know who can give that to you? The Lord Jesus. He's the only one that never sinned. <laughs> so he's the only one that can bring you forgiveness. I want everybody, 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 right out loud, right where you are, right now. I want you to pray this out loud with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you now. I need forgiveness. I need to forgive. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive my sins, to give me eternal life and a home in heaven. I give myself to you completely and fully. I surrender. Lord Jesus, I ask you to do it. I believe in you. And I confess you now as my Lord, my Savior. And I forgive every person that's ever wronged me, hurt me, lied about me, tormented me. I forgive them. Let mercy come. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's what I want you to do. You prayed that prayer in your minute. God will do what we asked him to do, but I need to send you some literature. I need to send you something you can get a hold of and hold it tight. So type in just my Lord, M-Y-L-O-R-D, my Lord, and leave your email address and I will send those things to you. Let's thank God. Everybody shout hallelujah online while those are typing in my Lord and their email address. Everybody else say welcome to the family. Congratulations. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Mercy and grace absolute necessities in a world where we're so quick to judge and punish the mistakes of others and only reserve goodwill, especially for ourselves. Mercy, unfailing, unending, unrelentless. The message I taught tonight is available to you in the book I wrote on the subject. I'll get into more of it next week. Mercy, there it is. I want to put it in the hands of every person who sows a seed tonight to help me in Sudan, where we're currently taking 125,000 meals, in Ukraine and Poland, where we are right now ministering food, ministering water, ministering housing, uh, 
emergency, all kinds of emergency relief. We're doing that. We're helping evacuate folks out of Ukraine and moving them safely into Poland and providing, helping to provide housing for them, temporary housing, so they can exist till they find out where they're going. They can't go home. So for your gift of any size tonight, I'm going to send mercy down to you, unfailing, unending, unrelenting. Then when we come next week, you can study right along with me. When you sow a seed tonight, and I need everybody, everybody, everybody. I'm just, I'm just going to share, just Pastor Rod, just me and you. I, I need to share that last week, ooh, let's not talk about last week because we kind of, we, we kind of had a lot of folks forget or something. So I need you. Remember, what you make happen for someone else, God's going to make happen for you. Maybe you need a change in your housing. Maybe you're struggling to pay some bills. Maybe somebody's attacking you and you need the spiritual fortitude to forgive them. And God will give that to you. If you want that to get great in the eyes of God, mix your praying and your giving tonight for your love gift of $40. Now I'm going to tell you, this is one of the greatest revelations on the subject of grace you will ever get your hands on. If the body of Christ is confused about anything, they are confused about grace. There's been a lot of false teaching, things being taught that are not biblical, but I take you through grace and you are going to be so blessed with all of the revelation in it. It's uh, here 170 pages on the subject of grace. Now, I released this book at a time where it got really, really hindered in its distribution. And uh, I so wanted so many people to get it. So I'm going to make it available to you tonight, along with mercy, grace and mercy, both of them for your love gift of only $40. $40 tonight. If you can, do more. Put an extra 10 in for, for the folks in Ukraine. We really like to give away from ourselves on these Wednesday nights, and you can help us do that. Father, I pray a special blessing tonight on every person that sows as you direct their heart tonight to help this global ministry. Been here for 47 years, over 30 years, preaching the gospel around the world. Father, help them to support tonight. I believe you will. And I ask you to give them a supernatural return on their giving as your word promises. Amen? So all the information will be on your screen here in a moment. Sunday morning's rally day. You know what that means. Pastor Rod in Dream Team, not huddle, Dream Team Rally, because it's Rally Sunday. I just said that. It's a Rally Sunday. And we're going to get ready for Easter Sunday, April 17th, and Good Friday, April 15th. Both tremendous services here at World Harvest Church. So come on in from out of town. If you're in town, come on in. We want to see you on Good Friday, April 15th, 7 o'clock. Easter Sunday, April 17th, 10 o'clock. we got more things than you can shake a stick at coming up those two nights. So don't miss it. This Sunday, rally day. Uh, we've had a tremendous week. Shelly in Pennsylvania, we're believing for your family's salvation. Richard in Arkansas, believing for your family's salvation. Amen. Jacqueline in Georgia, we love you. Every single one of you. Now, don't forget. Grace, the entire book, look at that, and <coughs> Mercy, its companion book, both available to you as you sow a seed of $40 or more tonight. Everybody, everybody, please, that can. Gift of any size tonight, I'm going to send you mercy, so please do it. I know you will. 
I look forward to seeing you in person or online Sunday morning at 10 o'clock.